Yeah, I'm going to take a couple minutes. Remind you of a couple announcements here. Take my ears out so I can actually hear. Uh, Zoe's going to click on the announcements for us. Uh, we had, as we mentioned, we had an amazing concert last night. S probably about 70 people from all over the community. Different churches came in. It was just a wonderful night of praise and worship. Um, we had a great time. Technology, of course, gave us a couple hiccups, but we worked through, and it was still, still a really awesome night, so... Uh, one other thing, we're starting up a prayer warrior session uh, for the next uh, probably like 10, 8, 10 weeks at least. Um, Sunday nights, 5 to 5.30. Anyone that wants to come in and join Pastor Joe, uh, we're going to just hit on a number of, of topics and, and pray for the community and members within the church and that sort of thing. So every Sunday night, 5 to 5.30 if you're interested. Um, this coming week, we're coming into Halloween, our youth group is going to have a, a youth uh, Halloween event, 7 to 9 on the 28th. Uh, full costumes, uh, bring all, all kids of all ages. Uh, we're just going to have a good time that night. And then continuing with our trauma reboot. Pastor Joe's doing a great job uh, with the group. We had probably like 12 to 15 folks with us last Sunday, which was awesome. Uh, great time of healing, uh, mental repair, just overall support. So we're going to continue that group for a, a few more weeks through that program. Um, if anyone is interested in jumping in late, you can see Pastor Joe, and, and we can get you in there. And that's it for now. I'm going to hand it back to you. Thanks. Well, good morning, family. A little, little early to get started, right? It's a uh, little chilly. We've got to warm up a little bit as we're coming in. So uh, just in the uh, last few weeks, it's, it's been great to be able to grow and learn and, and prepare for today and get ready to see what it looks like to bring the word to the church throughout this morning. And as we do that and as you're walking in, know that people are praying for you and, and we're continuously uh, seeking God's will for you as you walk into the church. Uh, this morning, uh, we have a couple announcements on the uh, uh, Sherry Eisenham is her surgery went well. Uh, she is at home, and she thanks you for her prayers. She thanks you very much. And Mike's surgery and radiation, Mike's radiation, is, is going well. His treatment's going well. Uh, big praise for God there, huh? <laughs> so let us take this time to, as, as we are praying for you guys before you come to church, and invite you into church let's prepare our hearts and our minds and invite the holy spirit to be present with us this morning let's go ahead and bow our heads and close our eyes uh, father god we just thank you for this time at seville community church of god that we are able to gather as a family to be able to call upon the presence of presence of you lord that you will bless us with the holy spirit that you will be present throughout this service that you will speak into people's hearts and speak into people's minds that they will grow closer to you in a way that they never have before lord that they will submit surrender and understand who they are here to serve for that they will discover their purpose in you lord lord we ask all of this in the mighty name of jesus christ and all god's people said amen, amen. and we're going to have pastor bob read the word this morning on yeah there we go okay i'm used to having the little ear thing that joe's got on but <laughs> joe's joe's going to be preaching today i'm excited for that uh today's scripture that he's going to be preaching from is going to close out john chapter 5 let me let me share that with you it's going to be verses 30 all the way through 47 it goes like this 
I can do nothing on my own, Jesus is speaking. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. If I alone bear witness about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who bears witness about me, and I know that the testimony that he bears about me is true. You sent to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. Not that the testimony that I receive is from man, but I say these things that you may be saved. And he was a burning bush uh, and a shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But the testimony that I have is greater than that of John for the works that the Father has given me to accomplish. The, the works that I am doing bear witness about that about me that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself borne witness, of, witness about me. His voice you have never heard. His form you have never seen. And you do not have his word abiding in you, for you do not believe the one whom he has sent. Mm. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. And it is they that bear witness about me. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. I do not receive glory from people, but I know that you do not have the love of God within you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive him. How can you believe when you receive glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the only God? But do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you. Moses, on whom you have set your hope. For if you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? Mm. May the Lord add his blessing to the scripture reading this morning. Does anybody have a favorite movie? No, I, I like uh, there, there earlier. I was talking about Hacksaw Ridge. I, I like Hacksaw Ridge. Desmond Doss, he's a private in the army and he, he's in this battle and he just he just keeps going at it. But what it is, is he's a seventh day Adventist and he decides that he doesn't want to take up arms because he doesn't believe in that. Right. And he just continues to go and, and stand firm with that. And he ends up saving hundreds, literally hundreds of people. And he's asking, he says, God, I can't hear you in one of the scenes. And that triggered something so much for me that I just realized that that was what my issue was. Like, I couldn't hear God. The, the other one I like is, uh, it's, uh, you can't handle the truth. Does anybody know what that is? What, what is that? A Few Good Men, right? I think this is a movie, A Few Good Men, Jack Nicholson just screams it out in the middle of the court case. You can't handle the truth. And sometimes I feel that way. You know, sometimes I feel like I cannot handle the truth. And, and uh, it, it's hard when we're in those places, right? But, you know, I, I'm glad to be here this morning with you guys to be able to share a little bit about that and what that looks like for us. Uh, let us go ahead and just bow our heads real quick and pray. Uh, God, I just ask that you be with us this morning, that you use the word here, that you would use this message to be able to uh, be there for somebody in their time of need, whether it's their first time here at Seville Community Church of God or whether they've been here for a long time, Lord, we just ask that you speak into their hearts and into their minds and, and that they know your presence, that they are able to be in the presence of the Holy Spirit and be lifted up and transform their lives into doing your will. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, all God's people said, Amen. You know, the last few weeks we've been in the book of John. And John, John's probably one of my favorite Gospels. Uh, even though it's not in one of the synoptics, uh, John does a, a really good job of touching uh, about the early ministry of Jesus. You know, he doesn't spend a whole lot of time on the, 
the early life of the, the uh, childhood of Jesus. He just gets right into it. You know, he, he starts right into the, the, the age 30, um, into the ministry. He's not really messing around, right? He, he's just getting right straight to the business, and, and I really like that personally myself. Uh, to a person that gets right into the things, you know, just willing to go all in. Uh, as, as he's getting into the ministry and he's talking about, you know, uh, where he's at, he begins to build a case, right? He's beginning to build a case uh, who Jesus is. He says, he is, Jesus says, he is the son of man. The living word, God. And the only way to eternal life. Church, we, we believe that the Bible is man written and God spoken, right? And you know, God uses these people to profess, teach, and proclaim, proclaim the love of God. Now, John has our attention, and God wants to use him to shine the light on us for a case of Jesus. That he is presenting his evidence, much like we do in our own court cases, uh, for friends, family, and those we encounter throughout the day, uh, depending on where we are at in our relationship with, with God. Uh, you know, I, me personally, my first encounter with the court system was when I was 13. Uh, my stepmother, who was a drug and alcohol counselor, had to plead my case. I was busted for grand theft auto. Uh, it happens, right? And God would use me today to be able to be up here as your pastor. Yeah. So let us review some of the evidence that John has put in front of us already. So, so John the Baptist shines the light temporarily, uh, but then he, as he sees Jesus, he baptizes Jesus. He, he was the one that was coming that was greater than him. And Jesus performs a miracle, and he turns the water into wine. Jesus informs Nicodemus. Nicodemus comes to him in the middle of the night because he doesn't want everybody to see that he's believing who Jesus is. And so he goes to Jesus in the middle of the night, and Jesus tells him that you must be born again. You see, Jesus meets with the Samaritan woman at the well, and he shares eternal life with her with the water. Uh, he is showing us and shining the light on the people, not just some people, but he's shining it on all people. And what does this mean? You see, we have, we have seen the people at the wedding witness the water to wine miracle. Uh, he gives the best wine first rather than the last, and, and this shows Jesus is the source of life. And then we have the lady at the well, a Samaritan woman who had multiple marriages. He displays that he is the all-knowing. He knows even our deepest, darkest secrets. And Jesus tells Nicodemus that he must be born again and that we need to have faith in Jesus. And Jesus will heal a sick man without even being in the very presence of this sick man. He's showing that he can be the healer and the master of all from anywhere. He doesn't need to be actually physically present. And now we read just last week about how he heals a man on the Sabbath. And showing that he is the master of time. And the Pharisees are upset. John is building a strong case for Jesus saying he is who he says he is. And the Pharisees are like, Jesus is going against everything we know of the law. So they confront Jesus. And the Pharisees are bitter, they're angry, and they're afraid. They don't understand who, why, or what to do with everything that Jesus is telling them. And they want to kill him. Where are you in this? Why do you believe or not? What are you going to do with your will? Now we see Jesus begins to testify to them and explain who he is, why he is here, and what he intends on doing. 
This is like a small trial with the Pharisees. It has a bunch of legal jargon, right? They get into the, the things that they are setting in front of them. And as Jesus is pleading his case, much like my stepmother did for me, uh, he's telling them exactly what's going on. He says, I will say, you know, that I am the son of man. And he says that he is God in the flesh to them. And yet they still wanted to kill him. I don't know, it sounds kind of crazy to me. What about you? Let us look at Jesus as he begins to testify for himself in John 5, 30. He says, I can do nothing on my own. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And you know, over and over in the ministry of Jesus, we can see he is declaring to be the Son of Man, he performed miracles from God, and they still refuse to see he is who he says he is. You know, last week when we learned that Jesus told the Pharisees he can only do what he sees the Father do, Jesus is verifying that he is here, and he can hear everything, that he knows all and is the judge for everyone, not just judging those that choose to turn away, but for every living man, woman, and child. He is justified in his judgment by the authority of the one who had sent him. They are refusing to hear him. And you can almost see the frustration on their faces as he's telling them these things. Jesus is telling them who he is here for, that he is the only one and has been, that they have been studying about. Have you ever tried to tell somebody like, there's something that you know 100% true, and you're trying to sit there and you're trying to explain and plead your case to them, it can get kind of frustrating at times, can it not? You know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you believe. And Jesus says this. He says in John 5, 31, if I alone bear witness about myself, my testimony is not true. You know, at this time, the, 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 they had an establishment that you had to have witnesses, right? Much like we do today. We still have that today. If you've ever been in court, you, ha you present your case, you present your witnesses, you present your evidence, and this is what he's saying. He says, you know, in your first five books of the Old Testament, this is what was, he, they were speaking of me. Moses was talking about me. And here, in the legal sense of true, all the evidence testifies to him. In Deuteronomy 17.6, the evidence of two witnesses or of three witnesses, the one who is to die shall be put to death. A person shall not be put to death on the evidence of one witness. You see, Jesus is about to bring multiple witnesses. He's not just bringing one witness, two witnesses, three witnesses. He's bringing four. He'll bring John the Baptist, the miracles, God, and Moses, who wrote the first five books that the Pharisees have studied. They know it so well. They know it verbatim. They can't even speak unless they know everything verbatim. In John 1, 26 through 28, John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one you do not know. Even he who comes after me, the strap of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie, these things took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. You see, John's out here baptizing in the name of Jesus, in the name of God, and everybody's buying in. There's uh, thousands of people being baptized in the name of Jesus. And then Jesus is coming along, and John's like, that's him. John the Baptist is like, that's him. Have you ever had the opportunity to, to meet a superstar or somebody that you kind of looked up to and as they came around you, you wanted to get their autograph? Could you, could you imagine that time where this is Jesus, God, 
that's coming before John the Baptist who knows and believes 100% beyond a shadow of a doubt that this is the man. This is God in the flesh. As he was the rock star at that time, John the Baptist, as he's baptizing all these people and, and he's telling them all there's one greater to come. And John 1, 29 through 32, this is the scene. The next day he saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said after me comes, a man who ranks before me because he was before me. Myself did not know him, but for this purpose I came baptizing in water that he might be revealed to Israel. And John bore witness. I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remain, remained on him. Uh, this is the testimony that John is, is letting the Pharisees know about the Trinity. Jesus is reminding them of this, just like Jesus shared with Nicodemus, that you need to be reborn. In John 5, 35, he was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. And just like the superstars and, and, and famous people of the world today, uh, we have a tendency to cling towards them and listen to what they have to say and share and, 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 and tell us, right? And, and it's only temporary. It only lasts for just a short time, right? We feel good for that moment. But then when we look to Jesus that's shining the light upon us, we can have that opportunity for eternal life that opportunity to be able to live a life that goes beyond our wild expectations, right? We, we have a tendency to put Jesus in a box, to put God in a box, and we say, if we only do this, this, and this, and this, just like the Pharisees are telling us, th then everything will be perfect, right? Well, that's not so. When we're in that relationship with Jesus Christ and he's shining the light upon you, he will lead you through those difficult times no matter what, no matter whether it's good or bad or indifferent, he'll be with you. Jesus is the shining light for everybody. I want to ask you, what is your light shining on today? Our second witness is the miracles, God. But the testimony that I have is greater than that of John. For the works that the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works that I am doing bear witness about me that the Father has sent me, and that the Father who sent me has himself borne witness about me. His voice you have not heard, his Form you have never seen, and you do not have his word abiding in you, for you do not believe the one whom has, he has sent. And you know, the Pharisees through their actions may know the law, but they certainly are not having a relationship with Jesus Christ. They have no faith in him. Do you? Jesus is here to do the will of his Father by bearing witness to the Pharisees and the stage is being set for the Father's will to be carried out. What, what is your will? As he continues to do the miracles, God's work, the Pharisees will grow angry, afraid, and be willing to crucify Jesus even in all their knowledge of the Scripture. Are you afraid? Scared? Angry in your life at times? You see, Jesus is going to call another witness. He's going to call God through Scripture. See, the books are God-breathed and man-written. You see, he's speaking to the Pharisees that know the Torah, the first five books, right? We just talked about that just a second ago, about how they know it so well but yet they're refusing to live it out. And the man, the son of God, is standing right there speaking to him. You see, Jesus is telling them he is the only way to God, to eternal life. And they don't want to hear it. Have you accepted Jesus Christ? Do you have a relationship with him? Or are you going through the motions and checking off the boxes? Do you want to shine the light? See, in John 5, 
verses 41 through 44. I do not receive glory from people, but I know that you do not have the love of God within you. I have come in the Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, you will receive him. How can you believe when you receive glory from one another and do not seek the glory that comes from the only God? You see, they're lifting each other up all the time, and they're telling each other, well, you're so great, and and you do this, and you do that, and, uh, you know, we as leaders sometimes get it wrong. You see, Jesus is letting know that their religion is wrong. You see, they've been basing it on the Old Testament, and they're not willing to do God's will and accept their son, his son, Jesus Christ. You can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you do not believe, it is clear you have not received him. If you believe, you would be willing to shine the light. You'd be able to present your case to those that are around you. You see, this is kind of harsh at the time when Jesus is speaking to the Pharisees and he's telling them this because he's calling them and they don't even recognize it. He's trying to present the gospel to them that they come to him and that they will not do their will. You see, he says, our fourth witness is Moses. In John 5, verses 45 through 47, do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, Moses, on whom you have set your hope. For you believe Moses, you would believe me. For he wrote of me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? Just like we've been talking about, they've been basing their whole entire religion on the Torah. And now the New Testament's beginning to be structured. He's setting the foundation here, and he's letting them know that he is the way, not the Torah that he is the way. He says, you believe everything that he wrote, but you're not believing me as I stand before you today. You see, Christ is the son of man that stands before him proclaiming that the one that Moses and John the Baptist were saying was coming. And Jesus performed the miracles, the son of man, God in the flesh, that only he could do because he's God in the flesh. They do not believe Jesus can shine the light for eternal life. And in church, I ask, who are you in this? Why do you believe? And what are you going to do with your will? At this time, I'd like to invite the worship team up as we get ready to close out. You see, when you have an interaction with Jesus Christ, when you have an interaction with the Holy Spirit, when you submit your will to do God's will, and He sacrificed His one and only Son for our sins, that you have the opportunity to be able to seek Him, to do His will, to repent, and seek God for forgiveness and for believing in his son, the source of life, for believing that Jesus arose three days after his crucifixion and would ascend into heaven, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit to dwell inside of us, showing he can heal from anywhere, at any distance, at any time, thus allowing us to be able to shine the light on others in the way through the study of Scripture, God's Word. We can keep the enemy at bay, showing He is the master of time. He is the way to eternal life. You know, I have a couple of questions for you. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in your life? And if you have, you have the opportunity to also repent and be able to seek God for forgiveness for the sins that you may have committed. And if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I would ask you that you seek one of us out after service, that you would seek one of the worship team leaders, or you'd seek Pastor Bob, or you'd seek myself, 
and we would be more than happy to lead you into that relationship. There's only one question left. Seville Community Church of God, are you ready to shine the light wherever you go? Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you for this opportunity today to be able to come before you, to be able to confess our sins and seek you in everything that we do, Lord. Lord, we ask that you just be present in each and every life that is here today, that they will be able to grow closer to you, to be able to have that relationship with you, that they will be able to shine the light on those that need to hear your word, that will be able to come closer to you through the experience of them having just an interaction with you that it is clear, that it is apparent, and it is what your will is for them to be able to have that relationship with you. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and all God's people said, amen. Oh, I will rescue you. Bow your heads with me, Lord, thank you so much for allowing us to be here and to worship and praise you this morning. Lord, we thank you for the weather that we're having, and we just thank you for healing everybody that's here. Lord, we take those prayer requests and we send them up to you because we know that you know what they need. Lord, just thank you for allowing us to gather here today. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>